Hey guys, welcome back. Today is September the, what is today? September the 19th, 2021. And let me show you what has failed on the Chevy. This is the 89 Chevy K1500. And I wanna show you guys, look at here. Can't turn the key back. So what happened was, what had happened was, I went to the store and um, couldn't shut the truck off. Could not shut the truck, okay, there we go. So I'm only gonna do this one more time for you guys because there's gonna be some point where it's not gonna be able to turn. So this, I'm not gonna say this is a common problem with Chevy trucks, Chevy vehicles with this kind of lock cylinder. Uh, it does happen, so if you ever get to the point, so I just went in and started it like normal, and when I went to shut it off, it will not, the lock cylinder will not rotate back. So don't panic if that happens, okay? What you're gonna have to do is, um, you're gonna have to really vibrate and jiggle the, and I'm not putting much pressure on this at all, jiggle the tumbler back and forth a little bit. It has nothing to do with the steering wheel or the gear shift column or anything, because it's, it's an internal problem. So you see it's taken me longer and longer every time to get this to go back to the off position. <laughs> Watch me say this is the last time I'm going to do it and it just fails. Don't get mad if this happens to you. This is absolutely the last time I will ever turn this until we put the new lock in here. Okay. So you can see how it progressively gets worse and worse and worse. I don't know what's actually failed in here. Um, it doesn't really matter. It has failed. so. To take this style of column apart, uh, it's not too difficult. It does require just a couple of specialized tools, which I'm gonna show you. Um, so basically I have the truck in the garage where um, it's not in the way of anything. And I'm just gonna show you how to, uh, to do this step by step. Now I do have a video that I, replace the uh, horn button inside there and the um, blinker stalk lever controller uh, and the cam, the blinker cam and everything in there. So we won't really go over that. I'm gonna try, and the other video was really shaky. So I'm gonna try to just have this camera sitting here. And if you want details this way, then you can go back and look at that other video. So, um, yep. So let me make sure that the shot is gonna be half decent and I will show you how to get this out and how to replace it properly. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple of shots over here and then we'll do some other shots on the other side. So obviously the first thing you wanna do is remove this, um, the horn button, as we call it. Uh, on um, most trucks, it should just lift up just like that. There's gonna be a wire in here and it clips to this right here. And here's the wire. You wanna be very careful with that wire. Down here, you will see a large nut and we're gonna take that nut loose. Again, I'm not gonna, I don't want the camera angles to be all funky and weird so just go back and search my channel for how to replace the horn button and the blinker and you will see a shot this way of that but we're going to uh, I'm going to get my impact wrench and we're going to take this off you don't have to use an impact wrench uh, you can just use a half inch breaker bar but I believe I'll, I'll tell you what size this is in just a minute all right so this is 13 sixteenths 
and I've got a like a four inch extension on here. Make sure we're on loosen. Okay. Take that nut off. And okay, very good. Now there are two holes down here. You have, this won't just pop off. You have to use a steering wheel puller, which I used in the last video and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I have the, uh, this is the Lyle 45,000 steering wheel puller. So I've got the two uh, bolts into the, um, bolts in the steering wheel and I'm just going to hold this and turn this with a 14 millimeter and it comes off that easy. It's not on there very tight. You don't need a lot of force, but you do need it. Please don't try to do this with a hammer or some other gangster way. You do need this tool. It's not expensive. You can rent these from AutoZone or Advance Auto Parts, Pet Boys probably. But use it, please. All right, now, I want to be very careful with this. I'm gonna pull this wheel off. It's probably gonna beep when I pull this through. All right, so we'll set the wheel aside. This right here um, has to go all the way in like that. That's how this clips, like that. It looks like it may be a little suspect. All right, well anyway, we'll put that aside. Now, in order to get this plate off right here, you have to compress this right here. And there's a special tool that's required to do that. Do not, I mean, if you wanna to try to compress this gigantic spring, there's a, there's a clip that's gotta pop out. I'm gonna show you a really inexpensive tool that's designed to do this. All right, this is the Power Built 648466. This is designed to remove the locking steering plate on General Motors vehicles. Uh, so basically, this part just screws on like that. So if you use this tool, very easy. So that's it. So now what I have to do is I've got to take a small screwdriver and take that little clip out. Okay. So that's there. I'm just gonna hold this and loosen this thumb screw back up. Okay, now, we got the clip off. It's just the C-clip. Then we're gonna take this plate off very gently. Now this plate only goes on one way. You'll see there's a, a large flat area that corresponds to the uh, hole and there. This comes, this slides off very gently. And the spring comes out. And then we will take off this screw. We'll take off this one. And this one. Oh, you got to take this off too. Forgot about that. So you can pull this out a little bit. Um, there we go. All right, so. <clears throat> There's a screw right here, the T20. Let me 
see, how does that come out? Hmm. Okay, there's um, that little thing, that, and I'm going to take this off the tripod and show you guys this in just a minute. So actually, let me do that now. All right, so let me show you what everything looks like. Sorry. All right, so... This thing was right was right in there like that, okay? And then of course this was right like that. And there's one, two, three holes for the screws. So this just pulls out. There's a little uh piece of sheet metal right there and then this is the T20 this should just slide right out Well, let me uh, let me do some poking around here and see if I can figure out why this thing has failed. All right, so we are back a couple of days later, and I'm just going to recap. This is the old lock cylinder, and it's a good thing I didn't try to start this again and take the key out because I tried for over an hour. This key will not come out of this cylinder. So I, I may do a video about taking it apart and see what actually failed. It's probably the pen. But I got me a factory GM Delco ignition. And of course, works perfectly fine. Whoops, it's upside down. So it actually goes that way. So that's how it's supposed to work. All right, so it's very simple. Let me put my reading glasses on here it's a very simple process it's just the reverse of what we did um, make sure that this slot right here faces down and you when you look inside the uh, hole here you're going to see a rod that's sticking out that will mesh with this with this right here so just very gently There we go. Now, there's a small little arrow on the lock cylinder that will line up with the arrow on the steering column. No problem. Whoops. There we go. Perfect. Perfectly smooth action. Just like so that. this plastic piece right here will only be able to go up into the cylinder if this key is in the start position. The plastic piece here, the horn, gotta be really careful with this, the horn contacts. Um the edge of this here covers up the uh, bolt. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to put this back in. Okay. I'm going to put this back in. We'll turn this. I'll get the plastic piece 
up in there. I'm going to put the bolt in. Get the bolt situated. Now I've heard of people just breaking off the end of this, but I don't recommend that. So Okay, so now this is not going to come out at all. I've got the plastic piece up in the lock cylinder. Now I can depress this. Okay, slide that in there, it clicks. And I can turn this back off. Okay, very good. All right. And this is completely normal for this to have a little bit of play. It should be about an eighth of an inch away. We will take our turn signal actuator and cam. Remember there are three screws that we have to get arm for the directional signals signal and put that in that little slot and then we'll take the screw it looks like it has a flange on it Take that up next thing we need to do is we need to take this ring right here and we'll fit like this under this put okay. the spring right there okay you're going to take the uh, snap ring and put the snap ring down like that I'm going to be using the uh, metric end of this. There's a metric and a standard. Okay, put that on like that. Now there is a pen that comes with this tool. And the problem with it is that it doesn't line up when this thing's screwed on. So I use a screwdriver. It makes life so much easier if you guys will use this compression tool instead of trying to push on it with your hand or with your feet. I've seen all sorts of weirdness on YouTube. All right, so once the, uh, let me see if I can get this light shine down there. So once you can see the groove, we're going to take this screwdriver right here and work it over. Just release the pressure, remove the tool, there we go. All right, so I've got the... Uh, Steering wheel situated back on, it's perfectly straight and level, just like it was before. And next thing you want to do is we want to take the nut and put that back on. Okay, we want to put the connector back on the 
actual uh, button here. No problem. All right, so now. All right, so this job, I have no idea how much a mechanic would charge to do this job. If I wasn't filming, this would take maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes from start to finish. Uh, that's it. These columns and this job, they're very, very easy to do. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope this helped, and I will see you on the next one.